Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course on Windows 7 system recovery options. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at what you can do when you have a big problem. We're going to talk about configuring system restore points, restoring system settings, looking at the last known good configuration, doing a complete restore, or maybe just rolling back a single driver. We'll learn all of that in this module. The system restore is a nifty function that works behind the scenes to give you another out, give you a way to roll back your system should you run into a problem. These restore points are generally created automatically when you do something big on your computer. You install some new software, you install a new driver, your Windows 7 computer takes your current configuration, stores it over here for just a little while, until you run out of disk space anyway, stores it over here, and then installs your new application, installs your new driver. If you then find out that something went horribly wrong during that installation and your computer is having problems, you can simply ask Windows, please restore everything from that old configuration. You can also create these restore points manually as well. I'll show you. It's in your control panel under System. There's an option there for system protection. The system restore can also be restored from the system recovery screen when you start Windows. So you've got that recovery option there that can allow you right from booting your computer to perform this system recovery function. So you can roll back to one of those previous configurations. This is really helpful if you install a driver that crashes your computer when it tries to start up. Maybe it's a bad video driver. The screen goes scrambled every time you boot your computer. But by booting into system recovery, you're not even starting the operating system yet. You're not even loading that driver. And then you can restore back to the driver that worked previously. The system restore function allocates a certain amount of disk space to be available to save these backups. So if you want to keep a number of different restore points on your system, you'll need some additional hard drive space. You may want to adjust how much hard drive space is being used by these restore points. We can do all of that from inside the control panel. If you go to your control panel, we'll click our Start Control Panel. This is going to be in the System section. So we'll choose System. There's an option right here on the main system screen for system protection. And this is where we can choose System Restore. We can undo changes right here by choosing a previous restore point. We can look at the protection settings. You can see on my drive C, the protection is turned on. And right here is where I would configure the restore settings, manage the disk space, and perhaps delete some of the previous restore points. Here is where you can decide what you want to keep. You want to restore system settings and previous versions. Maybe only restore previous versions of files, or turn off system protection altogether. Probably a bad idea. And here's where you would adjust how much disk space would be used. Our current usage, 1.48 gig. I'm approaching the upper level because currently my max is set to 1.8 gigabytes. And you can see that is 3% of my total hard drive space. And I can, of course, adjust this up and adjust this down however I'd like so that I can allocate more or less to be associated with these restore points. If I'm allocating that disk space to restore points, obviously it won't be available to other things. So it's important that we create exactly how much space we'll need. Don't make it so small that your restore points aren't very useful to you. Make sure you have enough to keep two, maybe three of them back, sometimes even more, depending on how much you change your computer and how often you run into problems when you're making those changes. A very valuable recovery tool is the Windows 7 System Restore tool. These recovery points are created every time you do something big on your computer. If you install software, a recovery point is created. If you install a driver, another recovery point might be created. And you can keep multiple recovery point points stored on your computer. And you can go back in time to a previous configuration so that if you install a driver, you install an application, and you realize this driver or application is really causing problems, you can simply click to a previous date or previous time, and your system configuration will revert back to that original config. Now, this does not change your documents. So if during that time frame you created a, a word processing document, you created a new presentation, those will still be on your system. This only refers to configurations. You can configure these also manually. Create a manual restore point. If you're planning to make a change manually, you may want to have that available in your back pocket. You can find the configuration settings for this under Control Panel, System, and System Protection. 
Now, sometimes your system really gets messed up. You can't even boot into Windows to be able to recover from one of these restore points. So you can always start it in system recovery. And then if you have your installation media available, that can really help you out in a jam. Let's say you install a new video driver. That video driver crashes your system. You may need to boot with your installation media or recovery install disk, and then choose your system recovery, which then gives you the option to go back to a previous restore point. And that can be really, really helpful. Just make sure in your restore points that you have enough disk space allocated so that if you wanted to create multiple versions of restore points that even go back a long period of time, that you have enough disk space to really store all of those files that needs to be in that backup. Another nifty recovery tool is this last known good configuration. This is really useful if you're installing new drivers, a new capability into your operating system. It says to reboot your computer, and then you reboot. And before you even have a chance to log in, it's rebooted itself again. And it's in this reboot cycle over and over and over again. With the last known good configuration, during the boot process, you can punch F8, tell it to use the last known good, and it's going to go back and look at the previous configuration and load that one up so that then you can log in normally. And this is one way that if you run into situations where there's no other way to get that configuration changed and you don't have a restore point to choose from, that's a very, very easy way to do it. One thing to keep in mind, as soon as you log in, your last known good configuration is updated. Windows assumes that if you're able to log in, the configuration is just fine. So if you just changed a very important driver on your computer, it may be worthwhile to sit there at the login prompt and just wait. Just sit back and make sure all the drivers load, all the services load, and there's no problems that are going to cause any issues on your computer. Once you're comfortable that the computer has booted up successfully, you can then log on. And then you know that that last known good configuration has now been updated to the current configuration on your computer. It's storing this information right in your registry. So under HK Local Machine, we can go into the system area under Current Control Set. And what it does, it takes the Control Set 001. It sets that aside. And as soon as you log in, it is copied to Current Control Set. And so anytime you make a change, the change is made to Control Set 001. That's what your system uses to boot. And as soon as that works properly and you log in, it copies all of those to the current control set. A very simple process. If you ever wanted to go in and look to see exactly where those were, that's where you'd go. During the Windows 7 startup process, I punch the F8 key. And when you do that, you get these advanced boot options that include the ability to go into safe mode, enable boot logging, and configure it to start with certain video settings. But the one we're interested in seeing here is the last known good configuration. If we hit Enter, it's now going to restart Windows. And it's going to use the last known good configuration when it pops up with that login screen. Very, very simple to do. You just have to know to press that F8 key very quickly when Windows is starting, and you'll have access to those advanced settings in the, the startup menus. And here we are with the last known configuration. Once we log in, our Windows will now be updated to that last known good config. In our previous video, we talked about using Windows Backup and doing an entire system image. And then what we were able to do was create a recovery boot disk and have that recovery boot disk available to re-image a fresh machine if we ever needed that. And you certainly have that capability, that ability to do those shadow copies and store an entire image onto that virtual hard drive. That really gives you a lot of good options. I can boot from the VHD. I can re-image another computer with the contents of that VHD. And I can do it from that recovery disk that I made. But you can also boot with your Windows installation media, if you happen to have that around. Because who remembers where they put their recovery CD whenever you need it? Simply boot from your Windows installation media. Choose the option to repair your computer. And you'll see the options to perform the recovery and simply re-image all of that onto a new hard drive. When you start up Windows 7, you'll get the option for Languages and Time Formats. We'll click Next. Instead of Install Now, you have this option down here to repair your computer. That's the option you'll choose if you'd like to recover the configuration on your system. You'd like to perform a rollback to a previous configuration from the times that you've taken snapshots. Or maybe you'd like to recover an entire disk. And we would like to re use recovery tools that can fix this Windows 7 partition setup that I have here. Here's my startup repair, my system restore, and there's my system image recovery that can take that entire VHD that I've saved off 
and then I can recover the entire set of files and folders, the entire image, to a new hard drive that I might have put into this system. Another very nice feature to have in Windows 7 is this driver rollback feature. If you install a new driver, there's potential that that driver could create problems for you with the hardware or software that you're running in your computer. And sometimes you aren't sure if you really want to install a driver. Well, with the driver rollback feature, you can feel pretty good about installing the driver because you've got a way to go back once you have it installed. It is this feature that is called Rollback Driver, a big button. You just push it, and it's there. And I've used it many, many times with drivers that aren't working so well. It's only going to be active if there's a version to roll back to. If you've never updated the driver before, obviously there's nothing that you can roll back to. I've installed a new driver that's a video driver on my machine. Let me show you if I wanted to roll back that driver, the process that I would go through. From our Windows 7 desktop, we're going to go to our control panel, of course. And in this case, I'm going to choose my device manager. And in my device manager, I'm going to give you an example. We'll choose our display adapter. I'm going to choose my graphics adapter and right mouse click, and then choose the properties of that graphics adapter. There's a tab right up here called Driver. And that's where I get to do a lot of things with my driver. Look at the current version. I can upgrade my driver from here. and. I can click Roll Back Driver right from here. And it says, are you sure you want to roll back to a previous version? And it tells you that rolling back may reduce functionality or security because oftentimes the newer drivers are updated. They're better. They have security patches on them. So Windows gives you this information to let you know there may be bad reasons for going backwards. But if you're currently having a problem with your current graphics adapter, clicking the Roll Back connection is going to go back to that previous version. And then you can deal with any problems that might occur from there. That's a lot of recovery in one video. Let's see what we've learned. Our first question, what function key do you use during the boot process to start the Windows Advanced Boot Options? These are very, very important keys to know when you start up. This one happens to be an F8 key that's going to get you to that menu where you can then choose to go into safe mode or to get to your last known good configuration. And here's a question about the last known good configuration. When is the last known good config updated? There's a part of the process as we're starting our computer where that gets updated, and it's right there during the logon process. When we successfully log on, our last known good configuration is updated to be the current config. So keep that in mind as you log into your system. And the last question, what Windows utility allows you to roll back a device driver to a previous version? That's a nice capability to have. And that is the device manager that allows you to drill into those specific devices and choose the rollback button. That covers the topics for these system recovery options. We've talked about system restore points and its configurations, restoring system settings in our computer, doing a last known good configuration, performing a complete restore, and looking at rolling back individual drivers in our Windows 7 operating system. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.